So it's a, uh, let's start our afternoon, afternoon session. It's a pleasure to introduce Ashish Mishra from UFPA. He's talking about, uh, his title is On quasi Stainberg Characters of Complex Reflection Groups. Uh, first of all, I thank Slava for invitation to present this talk here. Uh, this is a joint work with Digjoy Paul, uh, who is at Tata Institute, and Pooja Singla, who is at IIT Kanpur. Um, so uh, this is a workshop pre pre uh, dominated by vertex algebras and Lie algebras. So in that context, uh, this is a different kind of talk. OK, but uh, while groups are complex reflection groups, and yesterday in Lucas' talk, uh, I mean, some Littlewood Richardson coefficients came up, and also representation theory of symmetry groups came up. So one can understand that talk, this talk in that context. OK, uh, let us start. So. Uh, Outline of the talk is that first I will define quasi P Steinberg characters. We will see the motivation to study it. And then uh, Digjo and Pooja worked out these quasi P Steinberg characters for symmetry groups last year. We will see that result. Uh, later on, uh, we will start with Murnagan Nakayama rule for symmetry groups. And we will see the same rule for the groups uh, GR1N. Then we will see some preliminaries on representation theory of complex reflection groups, GRQN. And finally, the main results uh, in this work. And if there is some time, uh, we will see the sketch of the proof. OK, so notation is that uh, P is a prime. G denotes a finite group throughout the talk. Uh, a P regular element uh, of the group G is an element whose order is not divisible by p. If the order is divisible by p, then it is p singular element. So consider a group G whose order is divisible by p, then p Steinberg character uh, is an irreducible character of G such that the p part, such that the character at x is equal to the p part plus minus times p part of the centralizer of the element in the group. Okay. And uh, uh, it can be seen that uh, this is equivalent to uh, saying that uh, this will be, I mean, chi will be non-zero on p regular elements, and it will be zero on p singular elements. Okay. So a conjecture by fight. Uh, says that any finite simple group which has a P Steinberg character is actually isomorphic to a finite simple group of Lie type in characteristic P. Quasi P Steinberg character is a generalization of a, a P Steinberg character, and uh, our motivation is to see how this ultimately plays role in the theory of uh, simple groups of Lie type. But uh, we have just started. I mean, last year it was done for symmetric groups, and now we have done it for complex reflection groups. So a quasi P Steinberg character is an irreducible character such that it is non-zero on every P regular element. OK. Uh, trivial examples. These are two trivial examples. I mean, uh, for a P group, there is only one element which is P regular, which is identity element. And on that element, of course, the character is non-zero. So all irreducible characters of a P group are P Steinberg. And by definition, linear characters are P Steinberg because they are never zero. Okay. So I mean, because of this second example, whenever we talk about uh, quasi P Steinberg characters, we will always think about uh, nonlinear characters. Okay. So this was uh, the main theorem of 
the paper which is accepted in Journal of Algebra and its applications. So uh, the result says that for n greater than or equal to 3, I mean for n equal to 2, uh, S2 has only linear characters. So we consider n greater than or equal to 3. For n greater than or equal to 3, and when lambda is not a partition equal to with only one uh, part which is n or with n parts we, and every each of them is one except these two cases because in these cases also these are this is this corresponds to a linear character p is a prime in these cases the triplets when this chi lambda can be a quasi p Steinberg character are these okay the thing to note is that the thing to note is that yeah, okay in the case 3 this is the only nonlinear character in the case 4 i mean whenever a lambda appears the corresponding conjugate partition also appears and those will be the only cases okay so this was for the symmetric groups uh, so let us come to murnagan nakayama rule for symmetric groups i mean we need it for the case gr1 and so let us start with the sn case uh, this is q hook rim hook ribbon uh, is the name for the same thing, okay? It's a skew diagram, which is edgewise connected and contains no two by two subset of boxes, which means that if you start from the bottom of a diagram, uh, you should either move one unit northward or one unit eastward, okay? So in that way, there will never be a two by two subset inside this, uh, inside this rim hook. Okay, so, and the height is number of rows minus one. So for example, in this, its height is three. Okay, given a, uh, given a diagram, Young diagram, I will be using the word Young diagram and partition interchangeably. Uh, so given a diagram, one can define a ribbon tableau. A ribbon tableau is a generalized tableau such that the entries in the rows and entries in the columns are weakly increasing. So it is more general than semi-standard Young tableau. Okay, and uh, all the occurrences of a given entry form a ribbon. So for example, if uh, in whichever boxes one appears, those boxes should form a ribbon or rim hook or skew hook. And the height of ribbon, height of this ribbon tableau will be the sum of the heights of all the rim hooks within this, uh, within this tableau. So Murnagan Nakayama rule, uh, actually it is stated in a different way, but that is equivalent to this, which is uh, the following, that for a partition lambda of n and sigma, which is a, an element of S in the character chi lambda is given by the sum over all ribbon tableaus T of shape lambda and content given by the lengths of the cycles in sigma, which means that, uh, I mean, if you, if you write sigma as a product of cycles, then, uh, and you fix any arbitrary or order in whichever order you may like to write these cycles, then one should appear uh, the, equal to the length of the C1 cycle and, and so on, okay? So let us see an example. So for example, if lambda is four, two, and sigma is this cycle, one, two, three, four, five, its type is three, two, one. So three, uh, one appears three times, two appears twice, and three appears once. And these are the only two ribbon tableaus which can occur here. And one can see that uh, this, ribbon tableau has height zero, and this ribbon tableau has height one, so it becomes, uh, the character is one raised to power zero plus minus one raised to power one, which is one minus one, which is zero, okay? So therefore, this character is zero. So this is an example uh, of Murnagan Nakayama rule for the SN case. Let us come to GR1M. So the symmetric group Sn acts on the direct on the n copies of the cyclic group of order R in a natural way by permuting the coordinates, and 
uh, it does not matter whether you are considering this cyclic group in additive notation or in as additive group or as a multiplicative group, but we are using the notation as ad additive group. Okay. So this action gives rise to uh, a semi-direct product, and this group is called Reed product of the cyclic group of order R by the symmetric group S n. Uh, the elements are written in this way. The last element, the last uh, component denotes an element of the symmetric group. There are various ways to study representation theory of G uh, of this ZR Reed S n. Uh, so it was first, uh, the character theory was first done in Speck's thesis and later on a similar method of theory of symmetric functions is used to explain character theory of G Reed SN where G is cyclic group uh, in the book by McDonald, Symmetry Functions and Hall Polynomials. Also using Clifford theory, uh, one can one can derive the representations of irreducible representations of this group by wigner mackey method of little groups, where you choose irreducible representations of the, the of this these n copies and then form an form the inertia group, extend the representations to inertia group, induce it. Usually the induced representation is not irreducible, but in this case, these induced rep representations uh, happen to be irreducible and the, uh, I mean, one of the recent methods is by Okonko Vershik approach, uh, which was done by myself and Srinivasan in 2016. So, I mean, the basic theorem is that the irreducible representations of ZR Reith SN are parameterized by the R tuples of uh, partitions such that the total number of, such that the sum of the parts is N. So we need some, uh, some way to calculate the characters. And so this Murnaga Nakayama rule, which was first done by Stembridge in 1989 for GR1N. And uh, the version is stated here is in a paper by Adin Postnikov and Roikman, which appeared in 2010. So uh, a sequence of ribbons uh, corresponding to an R partite Young diagram lambda is obtained from a sequence of R partite Young diagrams. Okay, we form this sequence. We start with this R tuple of uh, empty partitions, and then we go on building this such that each at each step lambda i minus lambda i minus one should be a ribbon, and the ribbons and there should only be one non-empty com component at each step. Okay, and the rest of the R minus one component should be empty. Okay, uh, once you have this sequence of ribbons, one can form this R partite ribbon tableau, in which at each step, I mean, in in the ribbon B I, one feels the one feels the entry I. Okay, and corresponding to this R partite ribbon tableau, we define the following. Okay, ith index. Ith index would be the index in lambda i of the non-empty uh, component in the R tuple bi. The length lti will be the number of boxes in the non-empty component in bi, and height ti is one less than the number of rows in the non-empty component in bi. So using these, one can see Murnagan Nakayama rule for gr1n which is that, I mean, I will define these notations. So chi lambda pi pi is taken in this, as this element, z1, z2, zn sigma. We consider, uh, we fix an arbitrary order and write sigma as a product of cycles. So then this corresponding to this c1, c2, ct, we define length of the cycle is denoted by lci and Z, zci denotes the color of the cycle, which just means that uh, ZCI is the sum of the sum of the ZIs, sum of the ZJs where J appears in the cycle CI. Omega is a primitive RS root of unity, and RTC lambda is the set of R partite ribbon tableaus T of shape lambda, such that uh, 
such that LTI is, such that the number of times I is filled is equal to the length of the cycle CI. Okay. Okay, uh, how much time? Okay. So a complex reflection group GRQN uh, is the set of elements in GR1N such that the sum of Z1 up to Zn is congruent to zero modulo k, zero modulo q, and uh, it is a result by Shefford and Todd that GRQN are the, is the only infinite family of finite irreducible complex reflection groups. Okay, a complex reflection group is a group which is generated by reflections uh, in a vector space. So in this context, uh, there are some important subfamilies which are part of the big family GRQN. I mean, while group of type BN and DN, symmetric group SN, dihedral group, cyclic group of order R, and so on. Notation uh, M is R divided by Q. And the representation theory of GRQN is actually studied using Clifford theory. Uh, in Clifford theory, Usually one considers a normal subgroup of a group and using the representation theory of the bigger group, one studies the representation theory of the smaller group. However, in this case, we are, even, we are in, even in a more particular case. Here the quotient is a cyclic group. So we can make more deductions here. And uh, this is a result again by Stembridge that the irreducible GRQN module, GRQ modules are parameterized by the ordered pairs lambda tilde delta, where lambda tilde is actually an MQ necklace. What do we mean by MQ necklace? This is an M tuple of Q nodes, okay, such that, I mean, this is obtained, this necklace is obtained from the R tuple of Young diagrams, and such that the total number of boxes is N, and C lambda denotes the stabilizer subgroup for the necklace lambda tilde. I mean, I have not been very accurate here while writing this, okay, because to write the accurate thing, I will have to introduce more notation, which I don't want to do right now. So delta is an element of C lambda. <coughs> okay, now we come to the main results in this work. So the first main result is that, oh, okay, we, we first want to use this, uh, this result which we have for the symmetric group. So consider, uh, consider lambda a partition of N such that the corresponding chi lambda is a quasi P Steinberg character of SN. And then corresponding to that lambda, define an R tuple such that at any j from zero to r minus one, you put this lambda and all other parts are empty. This, <coughs> corresponding to this lambda tilde j, the irreducible character will again be a Steinberg, will be a P Steinberg character for GRQN. Okay, so proof of the easier part is that, okay, SN sits inside this GR1N and uh, P regular of SN, P regular elements of SN can be considered as, can be of course, uh, R P regular elements of uh, GR1N by identifying this sigma with 0, 0, 0 sigma. Okay, and so if you start with this chi lambda hat J to be a quasi pi P Steinberg character of GR1N, then by definition it comes out that uh, lambda, chi lambda should be a quasi P Steinberg character of SN. Uh, the proof for the converse is more difficult, which we do not cover here. And so the next theorem is that, I mean, for the general case, I mean, in the last theorem, we will just considering one part to be non-empty and other parts were empty. So in the general case, when we have an R part at partition lambda of the corresponding irreducible character chi lambda is a quasi P Steinberg character in exactly the following cases. The first, I mean, generally it will happen that this chi lambda j has to be a quasi P Steinberg character of Sn. There are some additional cases which happen when n is less than five. 
For example, when n is equal to 2, then the R tuple such that one of the components is, is 1 and the another component is 1 and all other components are empty. This is also a quasi-2 Steinberg character. Similarly, for n is equal to 3 case, where one of the component can be a partition of 2 and another component can be a partition of 1. And similarly, for n equal to 4 case. In the n equal to 3 case, this is quasi-Steinberg character character for p equal to 3, and in n equal to 4 case, this is quasi p Steinberg character for n equal to 2, okay? Okay, so a sketch of the proof. Uh, so um, basically, we want to use We will have two cases where in the first case p divides n and in the second case p does not divide n. In the first case when p divides n, this element 0, 0, I mean where all z i are 0 and uh, the cycle 1, 2 up to n, this will be a p regular element. Okay. When you apply Murnaga Nakayama rule on this element, it will imply that if we have a uh, quasi p steinberg character for gr1 n that can be that can hold only when this uh, this r tuple has one non empty part and all other parts are empty okay and then we consider uh, i mean by definition it will be clear that this will imply that chi lambda j is a quasi p steinberg character of sn another case is p divides n so when p divides n certainly p does not divide n minus 1 and again, you can consider a corresponding p regular element, but now there will be two subcases. In one of the subcase, in one of the subcases, uh, quasi p Steinberg character will not happen. In another case, uh, well, this n equal n greater than equal to five. This difference between n greater than equal to five and n less than five comes up. Okay. So what happens is that uh, for n greater than equal to five this alpha 2 or alpha 3, one of them is always p regular. And chi lambda of alpha 2 and chi lambda of alpha 3 are always 0. So that's why for n greater than or equal to 5, uh, nothing comes up. No additional cases come up. And for n less than 5, there will be some cases uh, which can be handled appropriately, okay, which were in the statement of the theorem. Okay, so now we come to the case of GRQN. Using Clifford theory, the sky lambda can be decomposed into irreducible characters of GRQN, okay. And the stabilizer subgroup plays an important role here. If the necklace is, I mean, in, if in a way the necklace is asymmetric, the stabilizer subgroup will have only an identity element. And in that case, this chi lambda will restrict to be an irreducible representation of GRQN. In other cases, it will not. But uh, uh, by the notation chi lambda star, we denote an irreducible representation which appears in this decomposition. Okay. And also, we, we should note that this, is, this may not be unique. Okay. Although in most of the cases, in the statement of the theorem, these turn out to be unique. Okay. So the theorem is that if uh, this is a, if chi lambda star is a quasi p Steinberg character of uh, GRQN, it can happen in only in the following cases. The general case is that chi lambda is a quasi p Steinberg character of GR1N. I mean, if chi lambda star is a quasi p Steinberg character of GRQN, then chi lambda should be a quasi p Steinberg character of GR1N. And in this case, chi lambda restricts to be an irreducible representation of GRQN. And the additional cases are for n equal to 3p equal to 2. 
in this case, when uh, this, there are three components which are partitions of one, so exactly the part one, and uh, if R and Q are multiples of three, then the necklace turns out to be symmetric, and the stabilizer subgroup has three elements, and therefore it will decompose, the six-dimensional representation will decompose into three two-dimensional representations, in that specific case, when it decomposes, uh, it will turn out to be a quasi-P-Steinberg character. If it does not decompose, which means if, if these case, if these things does not, do not hold, then it will not be a quasi-P-Steinberg character. Similar way, when n is equal to 4 and p equal to 3, this, uh, this irreducible character, which is given by, I mean, two parts being equal to partitions of 2, and all other parts being empty. In this case also, the necklace will turn out to be symmetric if, uh, if R and Q both are even, and K is equal to J plus R by 2. In that case, these two irreducible representations will turn out to be, uh, will turn out to be quasi-P Steinberg characters, but in rest of the cases, when it is, when it does not decompose, it is not a quasi P Steinberg character. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, I'll just finish in a minute. Uh, the sketch of the proof is that, I mean, again, we have to consider two cases P divides and P does not divide in. But here, one cannot use the same elements which we were using in GR1N. It will not be useful because in G, I mean, GRQN is a normal subgroup, so those elements can. I mean, the corresponding conjugacy class can divide into many other conjugacy classes, okay? So you have to choose specific elements such that the conjugacy class does not split, and then one can work with uh, the corresponding character values. So the subcases will be P does not divide n minus one, and P divides n minus one. In this case, when um, P divides n minus one, these are the exceptional cases which arise that n is equal to 3 and p is equal to 2 and when n is equal to 4 and p is equal to 3. Okay. So uh, in these cases, uh, in n is equal to 3, p is equal to 2 case, uh, there are three two-dimensional representations. I mean, uh, my natural instinct when working with complex reflection group is to think about uh, gelfand zettlin subspaces and Okonoko-Bershik approach, and using that, uh, I had proved that these actually turn out to be quasi, quasi to Steinberg characters. However, later on, my collaborators found a more general proof in which for any finite group, any two-dimensional irreducible character is quasi to Steinberg, always. And similarly, for n is equal to, I mean, for a three-dimensional representation of a finite group, it is always three quasi-Steinberg. But the interesting thing is that, I mean, these are the only two primes where it works. It will not work for the next prime, which is p is equal to five. Okay, so this is the exceptional case and similar, similar type of argument is used when we have p divides n. And with this, thank you. Are there any questions, comments? Yeah, because we were considering the case P divides n minus one, so. Yeah, because at the top there is something written n should be greater than or equal to five, then you have to consider n equal to two, three, and four case. So, but n equal to two does not arise in this subcase. Okay, thank you.